Perfect. So, Klaus Lundström, that's me. <coughs> uh, my main job is as research director of the medical side of, of SECRA, but I also have a part-time position here at CMIV, at Linsch University, as, as associate professor. And I'd like to talk to you about AI and how that will impact radiology and pathology, and especially the radiologist and, and pathologist and their work descriptions. Um, so let's start with uh, <laughs> getting the screensaver on, uh, <laughs> and then we'll see. <clears throat> Here we are. Um, the first thing we need to reiterate and emphasize, it's been said very many times over, but let's not forget that the reason why we're talking so much about AI is that there's a huge potential that's largely untapped, actually. So um, we see that uh, in the Gartner hype curve as well, deep learning, uh, the, the main technique in AI in, in, uh, we're talking about is at the top of, of expectations there. Um, and we also see that in the marketplace, uh, the number of actors working with uh, AI in diagnostic imaging is rapidly increasing. Uh, in, in the radiology conference RSNA this year, in, or in November, uh, there were 80 specialized vendors in the machine learning showcase. So uh, it's, uh, and that's a very big increase from last year as well. So it's, it's quite crowded in that sense, for good reasons, because of that huge potential. Um, but, uh, as we also kind of see in the uh, hype uh, cycle there is that uh, there are some inflated expectations in the sense that it's not a silver bullet. It's not as easy as just we have a good algorithm and then we're done. There are challenges, there are limitations uh, that we need to work through in order to uh, really make uh, AI useful out there. So one of those things, um, I, I want to give you this image to describe this because <coughs> you all read these uh, um, articles about experiments such as just last week it was about uh, cervix cancer in pathology, how AI is better than, than human experts. Uh, and then a bit a number of, of examples like that and many of them are really, uh, they are true, they are uh, good studies uh, validated in a good way but still, you need to realize that they are taking place in a research sandbox. And typically, almost <laughs> we do always see that going from there into real clinical use is another type of challenge. And judging from how much you see the headlines in the research sandbox, you would probably assume that AI is everywhere already being used out there. But that's not the case it's very little that has actually made that jump across that abyss uh, because it's quite challenging to do it. Um, and that's really where we need to be uh, focusing on and where, where Sector is focusing on uh, for uh, from now and, and in the future. Um, and one reason, one of the, the limitations that you need to, to understand is that any AI algorithm, those that you see create these uh, great results, they are very, very narrow. They are very good at exactly what we train them for. But we only train them for a very well-defined task where we have very good data. So if you look at the entire landscape of what a radiologist or a pathologist does, those uh, areas where AI can help today... I'm sorry, your screensaver is uh, um, messing with me. Let's see, here we are, I hope. Let's go back, sorry. Um, these spikes you see are the areas where AI can help. And as you see, that landscape is very sparse. So most of what radiologists and pathologists does, the AI cannot help. Most tasks, are at least not today, most tasks are more complex than that very, very well-defined narrow task that an AI can do. And it's very easy to, uh, you have to be careful not to move outside what the AI is good at. Uh, 
Let's try again. So to summarize, what um, what can we say about where AI stands today? Well, it's been a discussion, especially a few years ago, like will AI replace radiologists? Well, uh, I think this is the best answer to that. No, radiologists will not be replaced by AI, but radiologists who use AI will replace radiologists who don't. Very good uh, quote from Professor Langlotz at Stanford that you've been mentioning before. Okay, so let's uh, look at more concretely what is AI, and this is an example that some of you saw in, in the demonstration uh, earlier. Um, this is a good example because uh, this is a very common task for radiologists. Following up on lung cancer uh, uh, patients is about finding these uh, lesions in the lung, the small nodules that you see, um, and uh, this is a very common task. It takes a lot of time. You have a patient coming back, you have a first examination, then a few months later you have another one, another one, another one. And the task of the radiologist is to find all these uh, lesions, measure them, and in the report uh, say to uh, the, the oncologist and others, is, is this lesion growing or shrinking or is it stable? And this is not so hard in terms of intellectually challenging for the, for the radiologist, not at all. But it really takes oh, that's so many hours of, of uh, work each day that they just use on uh, browsing to the right slice and making those measurements. But there is, that's quite a simple task. So why don't we have AI help out with that? And uh, this is one of the areas where AI has really proven its value already. So uh, in this case, we instead would send off the uh, examinations uh, to the AI algorithm, and once the radiologist looks at it, it has already marked the lesions, uh, already measured the lesions, and the radiologist's task is more to just confirm, yes, I think you did the right thing, I think you find something you should, be, should have found, and then report the findings, which then also can be kind of automatically populated for you, saving a lot of time. So let's look a bit of how and when AI can be used, because it's quite a big, uh, quite many different scenarios where you can use it. Um, one is in kind of a triage mode, where we would first send uh, our images and data to the AI algorithm uh, to do some, some sorting or some prioritization, and then uh, send it off to the physician. Uh, there's, of course, the replacement, uh, where we take out the human expert as a whole. I think that is going to be quite rare, um, but for things that are not done at all today, well, even if this is not perfect, it's better than nothing. So that's maybe where we'll see that. Um, the add-on goes to the physician first and then goes to some kind of deeper analysis with AI. I think we'll see that, but the most common one is what I would say is augmentation, where uh, the human expert and the AI works together with the case uh, and combining the strengths of, of both. both. So um, translating this into more concretely, what would this mean for a, a radiologist or pathologist? Well, um, as we saw, reduced time-consuming repetitive tasks, I think, is really uh, the top one here that we want to use AI for. Uh, but we can also use it very efficiently, I think, to steer workflows, prioritize cases, prepare cases, for faster reading. I think one good example that we might be seeing in pathology is you saw that very long list of, of slides that Anna is working with sometimes. Uh, sometimes a task is just to find the first occurrence of something. Now, um, if you have looked through 10 slides and it's in the 11th slide, you have lost a lot of time. If you can have an AI that kind of is not perfect, but thinks, says that I think that might be something here, let me put it at number one. Well, then Anna just needs to look at the first one. Then we're done. Things like that. <coughs> For some narrow, well-defined assessments, I think we can use kind of uh, AI as, as a first independent reader of some sort, check for common errors, especially for junior physicians, absolutely, and then assess, uh, assist in, in complex assessments. And to summarize this, I think this quote is really good. 
going from factory worker to consultant, taking away those not so challenging tasks that take a lot of your time. I think that both radiologists and pathologists feel like being very much in a factory on the conveyor belt today, whereas they want to use their skills for the complex stuff. And this is really what we'll be seeing. So another way to put it, AI will make radiology fun again. I think it's a great quote. So I think it's a very positive uh, mindset around this. A few years ago, it was more about fear about being replaced. Now I think that everybody's getting there to, to understand that this is a, a great potential in, in also for the personal work enjoyment. So to conclude this, uh, uh, what's happening when AI is, is hitting the healthcare? Well, we think that we will see a trend towards going away from these silos. So instead of, of being a radiologist or pathologist, maybe in the future, uh, the more important uh, way of cutting uh, this cake is to be specific for a disease. So working with both radiology data and pathology data and perhaps genomics data uh, for a specific type of cancer could be a more relevant way of, of uh, working and organizing. Uh, and as we said, radiologists, pathologists will spend less time on repetitive factory tasks. AI and informatics use uh, will be much more central and intense. So the last few decades, uh, when we were talking about digitizing radiology and pathology, that was just the first step of how to use informatics. Now we're actually moving into a more interesting era based on that digitization to use analytics and really transform the way of working helped with this uh, digital world. And I think that uh, we will see uh, diagnosticians being focused much more on being specialized in the informatics piece and in doing the analytics as separate types of, of examinations, if you will. And of course, the consequence is also that their tools must follow this development. So everything that they will be using will need to be AI powered and span all diagnostics. And that is also, of course, the, the reason why you hear us, etc., talking so much about these issues.